What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Just out riding the Harley Davidson Sport Glide. Stopped off at Main Liquor, the only place to pick up your beer here in Perth. And uh, yeah, today just going for a bit of a cruise and I wanted to talk a bit about the Pan America. So let's get out on the road and uh, let's get to it. It's a beautiful, beautiful autumn day. And I want to talk about the Pan America because it's a bike that everyone's obviously talking about. Riders, Harley and non-Harley alike, journalists. And I think for good reason. I know most of the time we see something about Harley pop up on YouTube or in the news. It's usually people making fun of them for something or complaining about price and, you know, there's some argument to be made there. That's fine. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the Pan America and how it's kind of put a bit of a flip on the narrative of Harley Davidson, which is really nice to see. And as a Harley Davidson rider and as an adventure bike rider, it makes sense that I'm pretty excited for this bike. Now, it's not to say that it's going to be in my stable anytime soon, but I am excited to see it out on the market. I'm a huge advocate for adventure bike riding. Don't get me wrong, I love riding my Sport Glide. I love throwing all the camping gear on here and just, you know, heading out across the west with the boys. Um, you know, there's nothing, nothing like it. You know, the, the engagement of the air-cooled V-Twin, especially when there's a few of you hearing that thunder along the highways is... Uh, it's pretty unique, it's pretty special. But adventure bikes are really close to me. As someone who grew up, you know, riding and racing motocross, uh, riding in the dirt is an experience all into its own. And when you do ride a motorcycle off-road, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. It completely engages your mind and your body in a way that nothing else does. Uh, you enter that flow state. So I'm excited to see what Harley brings to the table. And I think with the announcements that we've seen, they've done an awesome job, on paper at least. So I think to start things off, we have to talk about that ride height adjustability or automatic ride height adjustability for the premium model. I think that's a game changer. Adventure bikes are really tall. The seat height on my KTM 790 is exceptionally high and I've also added a one and a half or two inch taller seat so it's a bench seat like a motocross bike so it's even taller. You know I'm six foot I've got a 34 inch inseam and I'm on my tippy toes trying to flat foot that bike. So what this does this technology that Harley created is in a very Harley way open the market to a wider demographic of riders. Harley have always been focused about reaching more riders, tall and short, male and female, and having this technology keeps in line with that uh, endeavor, I guess. It's gonna give people a lot more confidence coming into a stop at lights. It'll be interesting to see how it works off-road, uh, wh whether or not it'll be quick enough to engage, um, when riding off-road and you're coming to a tricky stop on a hill or in some rough terrain, uh, it'd be interesting to see how that would work. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm excited that Harley are thinking out of the box and bringing uh, some new technology to the adventure bike market, not just bringing a kind of cookie cutter bike to the market. So kudos on that one. Uh, the suspension looks pretty good. It looks very similar, I'm assuming, to the uh, Showa electronic suspension that Honda run on their Africa Twin. Uh, I haven't ridden that bike, but many reviewers kind of praise that bike as being, you know, pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, it's obviously not going to be, you know, KTM level, um, but, you know, I've seen a bunch of uh, motorcycle journalists putting that bike, you know, above other bikes like the GS and the Triumph. So, again, it'll be... Uh, 
great to see Harley bringing some good suspension in. And that kind of leads me to another point. Even if you're not excited for a Pan America, a Harley adventure bike, the fact that they're bringing out these technologies, we can only hope means that they're looking at hopefully seeing this technology trickle down into other bikes. I mean, I would love to see Showa electronic suspension that's fully electronically adjustable on the touring bikes. Like why on a 40,000 Australian dollar road glide isn't that, um, you know, standard technology yet? I think that would be awesome. The same argument could be made with the live wire. Incredible, uh, you know, upside down show a suspension um, on the front, fully adjustable monoshock on the rear. You know, those should be standard on, you know, soft tails like my Sport Glide here. So, uh, pushing themselves in the technology realm uh, from Harley, it's good to see and I hope it trickles down. I really like the design of the Pan America. I think it really harks into that North American uh, vibe, I guess you would say. It's got that Jeep kind of vibe to it. Uh, I dig it. It doesn't look like a farm animal. Um, you know, most adventure bikes look like chickens. <laughs> you know, the, the GS, the Triumph, the Suzuki, they've all got that chicken beak look. Uh, my KTM looks like a praying mantis. So, uh, you know, they've, they've kind of moved away from that design and done their own thing, which is cool. And it's funny because a lot of the Harley riders love that. They love the design. They think it's very Harley. And then most of the adventure bike riders hate the design because it's obviously not what they're used to. And I think that's fine. I think, uh, you know, mix it up, make it your own. That's cool. You know, Harley came out and they basically kind of shut everyone down with speculation about price and weight. You know, everyone was just talking about how, oh, here we go, Harley's gonna make a super expensive, overly heavy adventure bike that, you know, no one wants. And they didn't do that. You know, they uh, made the Revolution Max a stress member, uh, so it's gonna incorporate into the frame, uh, cutting down on the weight, that's awesome. They're only bringing in the Pan America Special in Australia, so no standard model. And I believe it's coming in at about 32. However, I would be surprised if we see any bikes on the floor in the standard special spec at 32 grand. So that's with the kind of cast wheels uh, and no suspension, adaptive ride height, duda. I imagine that most bikes will come from factory with the spokes here in Australia. Um, and maybe kind of, you know, half of them will have the ride height on them, um, probably, in my guesses. I'm not sure. It kind of tends to be that Australia gets um, limited models, um, but gets, um, you know, like the fully specced out models. And that's kind of the same in comparison with like the GS. So really here, like if you're going to buy a GS Adventure, um, you're going to be paying like 36, 37 grand uh, out the door for a GSA. Uh, and that's just because we only bring in the fully specced out versions of them. Um, so that's kind of what Harley's competing with. So they're probably going to be sitting a few grand less than a GS. Um, now, obviously, GS has got all that history, all that experience. And I guess that's what buyers will have to weigh up. But I think to start off with, I doubt many non-Harley riders are going to buy it um, because most adventure bike riders or you know street riders who aren't Harley riders are probably probably going to look to you know Honda Africa Twin, Yamaha Tenere, maybe a KTM, maybe a BMW if it's in their price. Um, I think Harley at the start is going to appeal to Harley riders who have been thinking about getting into adventure bike riding. Uh, and that's cool, that's fine. Um, and I think that, you know, providing this bike hits the ground and is a performer, then we might see some people convert. Uh, and I think that would be a, a test of the bike. Um, people, adventure bike riders, are pretty brutal when it comes to bikes. They are very specific in what they need and what they like. Uh, there's a lot of brand loyalty. 
just like uh, there is in the Harley world. KTM riders love KTM. I'm one of them. Um, the BMW GS riders love their GSs. Uh, and it's going to be hard to move them. Um, but I think Harley has a big enough support that if they can get some of their riders to, you know, add an extra bike to the stable, maybe some people are going to swap bikes. Um, you know, that's going to hopefully open the door, get a lot of those bikes out in the market and kind of prove to the adventure world that, you know, these bikes can perform. I'm definitely going to be uh, getting on one as soon as I can over here. Uh, I'm going to be chatting to some dealerships uh, and hopefully I can organize a decent test ride on them. Uh, you know, I'm going to want to take it off road uh, and hopefully I can take it for a decent amount of time um, so I can really see how the bike performs. Let me know what you think to the Pan America in the comments below. Uh, and what do you think to adventure bike riding in general? Um, you know, is it something that you're already into or you want to get into? I would really like to know what you think. If you're in Perth and you are an adventure bike rider or you're interested in riding off-road but you don't know where to start, um, leave me a message. Probably best to message me on Instagram and I'd love to uh, point you in the right direction of where to start. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's it for today. Everyone ride safe. And I will catch you on the next video. Peace.